loads drug lines. And uh, I learned a couple more things about using the site with, uh, with AutoHotKey for debugging. And I just wanted to go over them real quickly here. Um, some of them are actually about site and that, and the other one is this dump function that I, I found that I really like. Uh, so first off, let me show you here, I'm using site. Uh, I have a script here where I have this output debug line and um, I'm going to use that along with this line number um, to demonstrate one thing which I didn't do in my previous video so I'm going to I can hit F7 or I'm going to click a button and now I'm in debug mode and I'm going to start stepping into this oh darn alright let me close that no I don't want to save that and stop it and let's try this again I don't know why it was I had that other one um, oh come on I oh because I have it, it's going to go walk through that. There we go. Okay. It, I think because I had it, uh, it basically runs through that other script if it's an include. I'm using that function, so I jumped over to it anyway. So this line, standard error, this was the script, this was this line right above it. Um, and actually, this is the, here's an example right here, right? When you, what I didn't realize before is if you mouse over a variable when the script's running, it'll show you what's stored in it. So here on my var, I haven't run over this yet, so the var equals is blank. But notice when I start iterating, um, and, and uh, let me just show you here now. Look, now it's set to var equals v1, right? Because I have the v and the a index here. And a index is even, it has a value. Notice this is really cool too to me is like the line number I happen to be on this line but let me let me go past one here and now see I'm on line four when I mouse over this a line number it tells me where I am not that I can't tell from the highlighting uh, that was just interesting to me that you can mouse over any variable and at that point in time I don't have to do the list fares and find it I don't have to do a message box um, I, I ran through this stream viewer here where it this will put it to the window and that's why here it says var v1 um, and one on line five, right? That's what this is all dumping out to this viewer. So one thing I didn't realize earlier is let me stop this. Uh, stop the debug mode. Uh, I think a, an amazing thing here, right, is uh, if I was to just launch this, right, my normal part of me would say it, it's going to act like a message box and this is still going to, I need to comment this out. But what's great about this output, output debug line is somehow it knows you're in debug mode and you don't have to do anything. So when I launch this, it goes right to var, um, this this down here is where we are. And that to me was just awesome because I would always be commenting, you know, toggling, even though it's site control Q, right? It's nice you can just toggle comment out lines or of course um, if I was doing something crazy, multiple lines. But that I don't even have to do that, right? I can leave these lines in here and when I go back to debug mode, they'll be there and when I don't want it they're not there so to me that was that was pretty awesome um, discovery that and just the mouse over of like oh you know what I need to see what that variable if I'm in debug mode and I'm iterating through it so I start going through it and now I can just mouse over even if I hadn't built this line right and this wasn't displayed I could just mouse over any variable and see what what is stored in it, which to me is just, it's very, very convenient. All right, so part two, which really isn't to do a site, is just a tip that, that, um, that for beginners, I'd say, because I'm sure most advanced users know this, is, uh, you know, if, if you're working with some sort of an object or an array, um, because they're not text, you can't just do a message box and show the value. Let me see if I can do this right. Right, so now I'm going to um, reload this. Right, um, I guess it's, it wasn't running. So notice nothing is there, right? But um, I'm going to come back in here and say, yes, I have a lot of hot strings that, <laughs> that uh, put in auto hotkey code. When I relaunch this, You'll notice it, it. the one is saying this is an object. ARR is an object, right? It's an array. Uh, but you can't just do a message box because you've got to be able to, to look into that object and see what is actually stored there. And this dump function I found, which you can pass multiple objects to it, um, or you can just pass one. Uh, but uh, here in my example, I'm passing both the, this, you know, it doesn't matter, but let me put that one first. Um, 
So I'm going to pass this array and then this object to this dump function. And let me get to it. When we do it, it pulls up this window that shows you, hey, an array, here are the different um, elements, I think, um, in the array. And it's just incredibly, incredibly helpful because here on an array, it shows you the different um, values that are there. And then for the, the key value, um, these are there, and what's really, really awesome is you can literally come in here and copy it, and if you were to try to write this, you can paste it, and that's literally, um, I'll kill that, that's literally the syntax to write this, these values for AutoHotKey. So I use it as a way to also help me remember how to write certain things. If I happen to do something that dumps it into an array or an object for me, this can remind me how to build them. Um, but, but I do find this very, very handy. There's a, a disp um, function, I think. I, let me, I should have tried this before. No, maybe it's dsp. No, uh, man, I have no idea what that is. Um, but uh, I c that also works similarly. I just really happen to like this one. No, let me let me quickly show you one other interesting thing. I'm not sure how to describe it. Um, let me. I'm going to exit out of my scripts. So just bear with me. Okay, so now I've I've closed this script, and honestly, I can even close this because it has nothing to do with the. Uh, the, the, the actual script you're working on. What I realized, I was playing around here, and I said, you know what, Look, what happens if I start typing commands here? And I was very surprised to see that, that it actually acts almost like a command prompt. It didn't quite, but then what I thought was, hey, you know what, let me type cmd, and suddenly I realized this looks like I'm at the command shell, right? So now I can type, um, let's go to my C drive, look around, see what's there, right? You can navigate, you can do a lot of what you can do in DOS, right? And I'm sure there's, you can launch things. Um, it was just, hey, if I don't want to go open a command prompt somewhere, I can actually use this right here. Now, the one thing, if you do what I just did with the command prompt, I, I believe you have to make sure you exit out of it. Otherwise, it um, when you try to launch your other scripts, things don't quite work right. But that was a cool one that I had I had no idea was there. And what I had read, the reason why I even tested that was I read something with Site that said you could pass, you could type in here, and if you type in the right, basically, debug commands, it'll it'll give you more input, and I may just, well, no, I'm sorry, I really don't know what I'm doing, but in this case, I couldn't even guess at the right commands to, to what to do, so maybe at some point we'll figure that out. But um, that's it. Thanks.